Good evening, everyone. JP here at Brizzy. Welcome to our webinar tonight. Going to show you how you can get live feedback from your clients and pop there in the chat room. We've let in a few of you. Actually, we've let in all of you by mistake. So the chat room is already open there, and we are very happy to see you there. Uh, let me see. Uh, what are you doing with my screen there, Vito? Vito's oh, already right. changing his screen. With my screen. <laughs> <laughs> right. So let me see who we've got here. We've got Alec, Andre, Bozin, Chetan, all the way from India. And then we've got guys from the United Kingdom. And we share the pain also there in Australia with this lockdown. I mean, it, uh, if you've ever needed uh, a conversation starter, now is the time. We always can talk about that. Let's hear quickly there if you guys can hear us well. Michael, I see you say, hey, do you mean, hey, good evening, or hey, you can hear us? Let us know if you guys can hear us well. The chat box is jumping right to the left. I know, Jay, this Sorry. is Vito. We, we will punish him later for that. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. But I actually think it works pretty nice to jump a little bit. So uh, you guys just keep there. He's going he's gonna to switch it back later to the right. I like it on the left. Yes, Justin. Okay. Good, everyone. Welcome again here tonight. Um, Jay, yes, our, our good guys and uh, the ones that we are very happy to have here. So, guys, just quickly, time to plug our Brizzy Pro WordPress Lifetime Licenses. And as you see, every week it's going down, sometimes 50 per week, sometimes 100. And we know that price of 299 is a little bit steep sometimes. But the point is, it is a lifetime license. And you can see all the goodies that have been rolling out. So as those thousands count down, it's going to reach zero. And after it reaches zero, it's not going to disappear, but the price is going to increase. So still on the fence over that. We are at 664, and at this rate, I think maybe after two or three months, we may just reach that zero. I almost want to say reach rock bottom, but at this time in the world, I don't want to use an expression like that. Let's see who joined. Eric, good evening. Philippe, Austria, very good evening to you. Yes, if you've got the lifetime license, it smiles all around. All right, guys, so what are we doing tonight? Uh, we're going to learn about WP feedback. And if you have no idea what WP feedback is, excellent. This webinar is just for you because uh, Vito is going to show you tonight what you can do with this, especially if you're looking at agency and having more clients. It's going to take a lot of headaches away from you. And anyone who's ever worked with a client knows that back and forth headache it can be and misunderstandings. It's going, uh, Vito's going to show you how to install it and how it works on the Brizzy website and then show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use the plugin to get that live feedback. So if we talk about the game plan for tonight, I would say maybe we're going to run to 70 minutes, a little bit over that, because this is a very thorough tutorial. And then the showcase is pre-recorded. And the reason we do that is Vito, which I will introduce very shortly to you, is going to be in the chat room. Any questions you have, you can address it to him, and he can listen to that, ideas, features, or any queries, he will be there to help you with that. And then we have a little normal surprise at the end. And then remember, we cannot help you with technical support here. Any difficult questions regarding technical support, I'm going to give to Vito because I know he definitely cannot answer it. Right, so good evening. Uh, I am halfway through the South African lockdown, almost halfway. We're a little over halfway. We are day 40 now of a 21 Yes. Yeah. Tomorrow we reach two weeks and uh, it's been going OK. You know, we have a few people here and there that still want to roam the streets. But I think in the times like this, it's really not worth taking any risks. So I'm at home. The dogs understand why we're not going out for our normal walk. That is my biggest challenge at this moment. So, yeah, I like to cook and uh, I can actually cook pretty well, especially a mean spaghetti or a, <laughs> a macaroni and cheese, you can ask me for that. And I was just speaking to Vita before the time about microphones. One of the things that is my pet hobbies is wasting my money on a microphone. Now, you know, whenever you are using a microphone and you are doing something, you can only use one microphone at a time. So it doesn't make sense why I buy all these microphones and spend my money on them. But it's one of those things, you know, a good microphone, good, clear sound. It's something I enjoy. It goes back to the days I worked at radio. 
And it's also to do with a little bit of recording. So there's many reasons I'm a little bit of a microphone fanatic. And then the last thing is that you can see there in my photo that I have a beard, which I try to use so that my baby face doesn't deceive people about my age. But I decided last week, you know, with this lockdown staying at home, you need to do something to kind of keep you going. So I started shaving just and, and, and showering. Yes, I, I, of course I shower. Good. So that's me. I'm going to introduce you to the man of the hour. He's going to tell you a little bit more about himself and a little bit about the project that we are going to look at tonight. Vito, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Oh. Hey, guys. Yeah, Nice. Go ahead. Um, hi, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me, JP. And yeah, I'm excited to go through this uh, presentation. I actually uh, wanted to give something a little more than uh, uh, than just a walk through the product. And um, I I went a little deeper into the nature of communications and what is uh, what we learned throughout this journey building this product, uh, just so that you can have a better understanding of your client's mind, client's mindset and uh, how you can uh, um, not use that, but actually leverage that um, to your advantage instead of it being a disruption when it comes to uh, running the project and running the business, as it often does. Uh, so we're going to start with talking a little bit about that. I'll introduce myself and tell you a little bit about my history, uh, going from a freelancer to agency to product, uh, a little bit about the rock band as well in there. and. Um, uh, and yeah, and then we're going to go through the product. Please do stay until the end. There's going to be some awesome stuff uh, there, uh, both from JP and but for myself. Uh, um, some really interesting times that we're all living in right now. I'm in London, locked up here uh, at home. And uh, yeah, but it's exciting to share this uh, hour with you guys. Right. Tell us a little bit then about yourself, Vito. I mean, uh, we are very interested to hear about the rock band. <laughs> All right, sure. So um, I actually started, uh, I came to London at, uh, as a musician. So we used to have a rock band uh, just playing, you know, in our garage in uh, Tel Aviv in Israel. And uh, from uh, from there, um, we kind of used the power of the internet to get known um, abroad. And uh, literally within uh, 30 days from starting that campaign, we got signed here in the UK, which at that point we all dropped everything and said, all right, let's go be rock stars in, uh, in Europe. And uh, we all moved over to here, started touring, you know, started with shows like 10 people at a show, 15 people uh, at a show, and ended up with uh, literally thousands of people per night. Uh, released two albums worldwide. And uh, yeah, it kind of it seems like we're living the dream, living from a van. And uh, but even I'm though, not sure that's a dream, living yeah, from a van. <laughs> in, in our 20s, it was the dream, you know. Uh, and uh, but even though it seemed like the band was growing and everything from outside, we were literally making no money. And so right. I started uh, building websites for um, uh, from the van, uh, you know, just from people that saw what I did for the band and all these kind of stuff, all the uh, designs and the marketing that I kind of deployed there. And uh, once we turned 30 and started growing some white hairs, I see JP can relate there. Uh, a little bit. You, you so, say thirty. I'm I'm way past that. So right. uh, <laughs> right now I'm now I'm past that. But uh, thirty was was the time where we we're kind of like, all right, let's put this uh, this chapter uh, uh, behind. Let's see what's what else is available in this uh, life. And uh, I started building uh, my web agency, started as a freelancer. Within the first year, we got to six figures in revenue. Uh, by year three, we had a team of 12 guys already working uh, here in London, in, in, uh, in the UK. Uh, and through that experience, we came up with WP Feedback. Great. So I think what we should do now is we should jump into that video. Um, thank you for all of that. And then we have a look at exactly what WP Feedback is. Okay. And then, guys, remember your questions there in, in the question box. I think for many of you, maybe at the beginning, you aren't sure what WP Feedback is all about. So ask your questions. Vito is here. You can grill him. And then, yeah. Just before we start, two points, uh, like usual. At this moment, we do know that the world has a stress on bandwidth so that there may be some experiences with quality as the streaming goes out. Just be patient. 
The second thing is that when I start playing the video, there is a possibility that you will not hear any audio. So when that happens, you will see at the bottom of the screen, there's a little icon for the sound. Make sure that is set all the way to full. And the third thing, like usual, is we are recording this. It will be available on YouTube. So if you need to go give the children tonight their math homework or do some home economics with them, then you can leave. We will miss you dearly, but don't worry. You will be able to get this video on YouTube later on. So remember to unmute and then let's play. I'm waiting for it to play, but I don't see anything happening yet. How's it your side, Vito? Anything? Can you guys see anything? I'm still seeing a, I'm still seeing a gray screen. A gray screen. Same for me. Let me quickly see if I can run this again. So let's close this one. Technical difficulties, the world we are currently in. But Vito, you have to be on standby to no share worries. your screen. I'm <laughs> Let me see if it works this time. Okay. So let me just quickly go in here, guys, and see what we can do here. I think it could be a setting that we're going to just change here. And then I'm going to try and do that one again. There's all possibilities that we may be facing here. Play again. Uh, we're not breaking through on this one. If needed, JP, I don't mind pulling up the presentation and doing it. Uh... I, I think so. I think that's what we're going to go for um, at this moment. Luckily, we have that backup plan. And I think you and I have worked on this video, so it's just a shame that we have to do it. But I would say in the fact that it's not playing, let's go for that. So Vito, would you take some charge there? You can share your screen as well. Uh, just go to the plus there at the top and you will have the option there if you want to do the share screen. So give me one minute. Uh, you can do your radio thing while I'm setting up here. Ah, I have to do the radio thing. I've got nothing to promote, so I don't know what to say at this moment. Right. So guys, uh, actually, yes, uh, I can think of something to, to tell you quickly. And that is that if you are on the YouTube channel, you will see that actually a lot of the videos that we are releasing at the moment seems very similar to videos that we have released. As you know, last week in our Brizzy Cloud, we had shown you some big changes to the Brizzy Cloud. We had brought over multiple pages to Brizzy Cloud free, and we've made some changes to the packages. So based on that, we have various uh, changes that we need to make to the videos that we are working on. And that's why a set of videos that we had made just two or three weeks ago, I have to remake them all. So just be patient as we roll out all those videos and we have full tutorials coming up within the next week. So I know that I've just been talking to a few people on Facebook earlier today about full tutorials. Those are all rolling out. And on the stories that we had covered last week, patience, patience, patience on that. Uh, just keep showing the stories. I knew somebody was going to say that, Justin. Uh, I should have put some a price down or a pool for who's going to bring up the stories feature. I'm also begging them to give me access to the beta for that so I can show you a little bit more, especially on the builder uh, tomorrow. Well, tomorrow may be Easter. I know for many people, so I probably will only be able to jump on the team next week and ask them a little bit about that. I was looking at your side. Uh, so, so I got the presentation up, but now I'm looking for a way to share my screen. Okay, there you see in the big screen, there's a plus. Click on the plus, and then you will see fourth from the top, share screen. Right. Let me do this guy. Clicking the plus, nothing happens. Let me expand the screen, maybe. Clicking the plus, got it. And then share screen. There we go. I can see your screen loading. Good. Okay. Great. Nice. That's exactly what we what I was hoping we'll see. All right. Perfect. So um, we can get started here, guys. And uh, let's get started with what we're basically going to be talking about. So uh, before we jump into the presentation, which uh, we will do as well, 
Um, oh, I'm not really set up for that. So we might do uh, like one minute of uh, setting up again uh, after uh, we do this part of the um, of the webinar. Uh, but I want to start by really understanding our clients and uh, how, why uh, all of these problems come about. And more than that, what is it causing, uh, what is it creating within our businesses uh, um, when it comes to, uh, to our profit margins, when it comes to our uh, mentality, when it comes to our morale uh, running a, a design agency? So first of all, we're going to talk about the reality difference. Then we're going to see how we can build the right processes within the agency or the freelancing business uh, to uh, communicate with clients efficiently. Um, I'm going to introduce you to a concept that I just love uh, that's called eating your clients' complications. And uh, from there, we're going to talk about guarding your communication channels and why this is important and how you can do that. And finally, we're going to walk you through how you can save 12 hours every single month, at least 12 hours every single month per team member. Uh, when it comes to your client communications and managing the project. And I would like you guys to stay until the end because there's going to be a Q&A. Now it's going to be a live Q&A uh, because uh, we just pivoted a minute ago. And uh, I'm also going to give you a copy of our WordPress business benchmark survey, which is this guy. Uh, this was actually something really interesting that we created as part of the beta for our own product. Uh, we surveyed 600 uh, WordPress professionals to ask them how they run their WordPress business um, so that uh, we can, uh, you know, just build around that. But it just became such a really interesting report. So we wrapped it up and we're sharing this data um, with you. Uh, if you stick until the end. Uh, also, we're going to talk about the biggest mistake that most freelancers and agencies are making when it comes to managing clients, how you can gather content, approve designs, and provide support without the client breathing down your neck or disappearing for months on end. And JP, I'm sure you, uh, you're familiar with that experience. Absolutely. And then uh, uh, we're going to talk about the one solution that will help systemize your work, reduce back and forth to zero, and get your clients to love working with you and coming back for more. So just a little bit about me. So I am the founder of WP Feedback, and I was also the founder of Ace Digital London, which is a digital agency here in uh, the city. And I'm also a certified business consultant. I started building, I built my first websites on GeoCities, if you guys remember what that was, like that was uh, ages and ages ago. And uh, uh, yeah, that was when I was like 14 years old. Uh, but Basically, when I started telling you before, um, I came to London to actually pursue a music career. And uh, that's us towards the end of the kind of uh, the peak of the band. And that's me kind of building my, uh, some websites literally while we're driving down the road. I think that was Germany or something. And then from here, um, after that happened, I started, you know, just on my own um, with a laptop in a tiny room. You, you couldn't walk past back here because that's where the room ended. So where the photographer is taking the picture, that's actually the size of the room here. From there to a nicer office uh, at home, which is where I, I, I'm here right now. I'm back here. Uh, but uh, we have our offices uh, here in London where we actually grew the team. Uh, to 12 guys, and from there we created WP Feedback as a way of solving our own uh, client communication problems. So the three essential parts, and so the guys, I'm not really sure exactly who is on this call, so some things might be a little basic, some things are going to go really deep, and um, uh, so let's start with the basics. The three essential parts of any successful website projects are gathering the content, creating the design, and providing proper support. That's it. If you've got, if you nail those three, you have a you have a working business. Um, it seems, but it seems that over time the community has lost focus on how to efficiently get our clients to do what we need, and it results in a never-ending game of cat and mouse. You know, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. When you need something from the client, you send it, and then you start chasing them, and it takes ages, and they don't know what you want. You don't know what they want. It's just a mess. Um, not always, but sometimes, and that these are the problems. These are the ones that cause us the most stress. Um, yeah, and you know this, this experience. Countless email threads, multiple platforms, jumping from one platform to another, uh, massive spreadsheets with color-coded stuff. It's just an endless follow-up. And this is causing us to waste time on the most meaningless tasks instead of focusing on the creative part of our job, which is why I came into the game. And I'm sure that a lot of you guys 
uh, are also uh, under the same kind of uh, mindset there. So to the point that dealing with clients is quickly becoming the biggest reason freelancers and agencies are falling out of love with their businesses. And that became very, that, that happened to me actually. And, and that, uh, that uh, from the survey that we ran, uh, this actually became very apparent that this is a, a huge problem in our ecosystem. And now, from that, I can tell you that only freelancers and agencies with a structured system for managing clients' communications can say, when I start a project, I know exactly when this is going to launch. And not approximately, not like in three weeks or so, you know, we have a date and we're going to make it to that date because everything is working like a clock. So to get started with, uh, with understanding how to solve this problem, um, we, aren't, we need to understand the reality difference between us and our clients. And as techies, which is how I define all of us, we often overcomplicate things, forgetting that the client's reality and mindset is completely different to ours. And this is how I kind of like to look at it, you know, and it's the same in music, actually, you know, people that are musicians or, or involved in creating music, listen to a song and they can see, they can hear it in 3D. You can listen just to the bass drum and just to the backing uh, uh, vocal on the left side. And, you know, JP, you familiar with what I'm talking here? You know what I mean? Oh, I don't know if we have JP, so I'll continue. You know, I, I, wait, can you hear me? Yes, I, I, I switch off my microphone there. So that's for a moment. I'm trying to just get back and see how it works. No, I'm totally familiar with this. Yeah. yeah. So we, we, we when we listen to music, we hear it in 3D. And when someone that it doesn't do it, that doesn't kind of like practice it all day long, they just hear the song uh, pretty flat, pretty 2D. And that's the same experience for web designers and their clients. When we look at a website, we see the layouts, we see the, uh, the structure, we see the color kind of palette uh, around this. We see the logic behind it. We basically see the matrix. But when a client looks at it, they see it's in 2D. All they see is like a flat rectangular box with some colors and stuff on it. So that's where we started. We started from that understanding that uh, what we look at is just completely different from what our client is looking at. And now, what do we need to do? So in order for us to fix that problem, we need to build the right process within our business that actually have those touch points in place. And to do that, I want to share our own uh, process within my agency. And that really saved us loads and loads of uh, headaches, just having this small uh, flowchart in place to clarify exactly what needs to happen and when someone is signing the proposal and of course paying the deposit. That's the first thing that uh, we needed to have. Nothing started before that. Then we went on to discovery. To do that, there's the first client touch point where you understand their business, right? Then from there, we went on to the architecture and uh, uh, building the frame of the website just so that we can agree on, we're not gonna have any additional pages just jump into the game and uh, uh, make a huge difference. Uh, Jay, I'm gonna answer that question uh, definitely. Uh, uh, towards the end, there's a huge difference between the two products. Um, next up, wireframes and prototypes um, so that we can communicate the layout before we start designing and, and spending time on development and designers there. Uh, again, we have another com client communication point here. Uh, this is where we did our first revision. To that's where we gave our first revision uh, for the layouts. And that's also where we were gathering the content. So until this point, we only had discovery and understanding the business, but not having the content. Uh, from there, we went on to the design. Once we had the content in place and we have a layout, the designer went in. And then we had two additional revision rounds that needed to be communicated to the client before we do the launch. But the process didn't end there. After the launch, straight away, they go into the, the, the process process of upgrading them to a care plan. And this is invaluable to any business. I'm sure that a lot of you guys that already have this uh, running within their, uh, their businesses at the moment see the value of this, especially in times like this, in times where uh, there is uncertainty, care plans are there to drive cash flow. So this is like, you know, one of the most important part of running a proper agency. Um, right, so now that we know what, where are you, our client kind of touch points? Um, let's understand what is a natural communication flow and what we usually get. So this is what we aspire to get. And this is very basic so that we can see this and remember this all the time. This is 
just a game of catch. A communication is a game of catch. You throw the ball and the other guy catches the ball and then he throws it back to you. So a game of catch is properly done when both sides can actually catch the ball and pass it to the other side. But in reality, that's what we usually see because we have a difference in reality. Uh, we see the world differently when we tr when we send a request to the client they send us something that is uh, a little different so we try to correct them but then they, we miss the spot right there so they send something completely different and it just continues on and on and on this is what we call developed traffic instead of a straight up flow we develop the traffic further more than what it should have been creating loads of back and forth and loads of uh, mess so Basically, this is what we want to see. We want to make sure that when we toss the ball, when we throw this uh, little like, uh, cup of uh, beer here, uh, the other side can confidently catch it. And that's the same thing from our side. When, when we get a communication from the client, we don't need to go into a spin and, under, and, and try to figure out what they're talking about. We need to confidently catch it and chug it down, you know, with confidence, right? Uh, but again, this is what we usually get. Uh, you know, we get a request from the client saying uh, uh, the button is off. Oh my God, there's 200 buttons on the website. What are we talking about here? Which page, what are you looking at? Which browser are you on? Which screen, which device are you using? All of these kind of stuff. Can you please send me a screenshot? We just get the, and I love this gift because of this guy's face. It describes the situation so, uh, so accurately. So, so this is what we're trying to avoid. And when it comes to gathering content, approving designs and providing support, this is what we usually happen. We have long and detailed Word documents that over explain every little thing that needs to be done. And it, tell me in the comments, guys, if anything, if, all, if any of these resonate with you, if you've experienced this yourself. Uh, we have fragmented emails with screenshots and attachments about every single request. This is if the client is already uh, knows what he's doing, if he can send us a screenshot and a link, and that's actually a good place to be. Um, elaborate color-coded spreadsheets with hundreds of rows and statuses, but no visual representation to what we're talking about. And the whole thing is a visual thing that we're building here. Uh, and also multiple platforms and additional logins for every step of the process. This is the most insane part of, uh, of this game uh, because you got, you know, a project takes about six weeks. Now, uh, imagine all of these touch points. Where were we? For each different touch point, we would ask the client to learn a different system. Go now and send us this via email. Now send us this through this Word document. Then you need to go to the project management system and do that kind of stuff. Then you need to go to Envision and improve, and improve that kind of thing. So like within six weeks, we're changing the world six times uh, in an illogical way. And I like to think about it like, you know, uh, if my accountant would have asked me to jump between platforms every two weeks, there's no way I would have done what they asked and I would just resort to what makes sense for me. And that's what's causing us, uh, that's what's creating more confusion for them, making the process seem extra complicated in the eyes of our client. Uh, to the point that the client simply refused to face that process because it ch keeps changing on the time and either resort to what makes sense to them or just disappear with a promise that, yeah, I'll get to it at some point. So, why do we even care about this you know because this happens but maybe this is just part of the game maybe this is what we have to uh, uh, you know to go through if we want to be in business maybe that's just how it is so the reason why i got familiar with this is because the agency model model is a very slim profit model and um, every minute counts which and, and because every minute is money so every time that we're spending time, uh, wasting time with clients, trying to get to them to understand something, or every time we try to understand something from them that they were talking about, we were literally losing money. So I tracked where does the profit go within my own agency uh, and what can I consider as a waste of time? And it always came down to client communications. That was the most use, uh, useless waste of time within the agency. Everything else was going to creative work, development work, the stuff that we are hired to do. So what is eroding our profit margins? And these are the three main points that I came up with when I was doing this kind of research there. So projects that, uh, these are the main kind of pain points. Uh, uh, projects that start and hang without securing the final deposit on time. 
this was a huge headache for me as the as the agency owner um because you keep chasing the client just to get them to do what you need so that you can get that money uh the team is dealing with follow-ups and chasing clients rather than focus on development and design which is reducing morale to its lowest point and uh, no one wants to do this kind of uh, annoying work let alone you know an employee uh, uh, that was hired to be a designer uh, reopening old projects that lost momentum and require additional attention and update rounds to restart. So if we manage to get through these hurdles, we were facing this problem uh, where, you know, sometimes it, we even had a, a, a client that literally took a year to deliver an about page um, just because, you know, uh, we, she started when I was starting the agency. I wasn't very much aware of these things, but this whole thing is definitely on me because I, I she didn't know how to do it and she couldn't face the fact that she didn't know how to do it. So she literally disappeared for a year. When she came back, we had to reopen the project. Uh, we already had different people working at the agency, at, uh, uh, so, so, some of them. So we had to kind of like relearn what was going on back there, where this, this stopped. Huge waste of time, huge waste of money. And again, this is what we strive to do, yeah? We, we want to toss the ball and the other side should catch the ball and back and forth, you know? That's the natural way. And this is really far from this. So from there, we kind of figure out, okay, so what can we do? How can we fix this problem? And that kind of came into play with uh, one of the uh, really interesting concepts that I implemented within my agency that's called eating your client's complications. And to illustrate this point, I want to talk to you about uh, this guy, Jeff Bezos, who is the man behind Amazon. And I want to tell you how they ate all of our complications around reading a book and you probably know yeah fine you know kindle but the the story behind it and how this came about is uh is just mind-boggling here so um before amazon or before the kindle what our process was if we wanted to read a book or wanted to buy a book we had to drive to a bookstore find parking look for the book probably it's not there so we need to go to the till and order the book and go back home. Then a few days later, we'd drive back there, find parking, buy the book, drive back home, and only then we can read the book, right? Such a, uh, a definitely not like a, 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 an optimal uh, communication between here and there. So many, so much developed traffic in here. And now this is what we, what's happening. We want to buy a book. We just search for it on the Kindle and we read the book. That's it. That's all that it, that it is. Now, it seems so simple, but what happened to make sure that this will happen? So when Bezos came with this idea of kind of trying to eat that complication for his clients, um, he, he reached out to the, um, uh, to the publishers and told them, listen, I want to do this device and whatnot, you know, and I need a digital version of the book. But no one had a digital version of the book back then. Uh, so they told him, no, there is nothing like that. They couldn't see the potential. And he also saw that it's a huge pain to get the, uh, to get, uh, the publishers to even deliver a digital copy of the book to him to sell it. So he ate that complication too. He went on to Asia and built Massive, massive facilities, massive factories. It's like hungers, you know, where all you have in there is just copying machines and loads and hundreds and hundreds of copying machines inside these facilities. And he literally shipped all of the books from Amazon to those, those facilities to be scanned one page at a time uh, and to uh, tra transform them into digital uh, copies. And then he had to build that device for us to read that book. But when the device was already ready, the experience was that, you know, back then, if you guys remember, we had to plug everything into the computer. You know, if you wanted to uh, load a, a, an MP3 track into your, uh, I, uh, to your uh, um, iPod, you would connect it to your device and go through all that pain where it resyncs and doesn't sync and all that kind of annoying stuff. So um, he just didn't, he was, wasn't having it. There's no way people will need to go through this pain with my device. Even the, the, his engineers, he was told that they were telling him, listen, there is, uh, this, there is this, uh, uh, there is this new thing called Wi-Fi. How about we just use this Wi-Fi? No, you got to look behind that device and find that tiny password to connect your device. No, I want someone to open the box and read a book. And so they 
charged all of the all of the first Kindles with SIM cards that were roaming f- from the day they left the factory, uh, even do even inside the box, so that when you received that device, uh, you just had all of the books in there. It seemed like you had all the books in there. And that's what people actually thought. They thought, oh my God, I have literally all the books, in, millions and millions of books from around the world right in this tiny device in my hand, not realizing that they're connected and pulling information through that uh, SIM card that was in there. Obviously now Wi-Fi is in a different place, but that was the first kind of thing. He ate the complication to that level. Um, and of course he had to market this device to the entire world, which is a pain on its own. So. Just to create this experience, that's what this company had to go through uh, to uh, create that experience. Obviously, we don't need to work at this scale, but this gives you the kind of uh, uh, um, mindset of what it takes to really eat a client complication. Now, this can be applied to any aspect of your business. And I want to show you a few complications that I found uh, um, um, within our own agency and even through our users now that we're running with uh, WP Feedback. Um, Expecting a client to know how to write website copy. Why why would... Why would they know that? Like, there's no reason in the world why would they know how to do something like that? Expecting clients to know how to provide design feedback. Again, when they're looking at the screen, all they see is just a rectangular box. Uh, Sending the client to a dozen different online tools like we talked about. Like, it's most cases, it's not their reality. Even... You can you can have a, look. a great example is see where the world had to be had to be for people to use Zoom. You know we've been using these kind of tools uh, within our community for years. Uh, you know like doing video calls and stuff like that. It's natural to us. But you know like just in the past couple of weeks, it it took a world p- a pandemic to get people to use uh, a digital service like that, such an efficient digital service like that. Um, right, sending clients to, to different, and we're trying to send them to different online tools, and in most cases, none of them are on their own website, which is what they even purchased. Uh, chasing or changing the workflow for each step of the build, that's what we talked about as well. Um, uh, uh, undefined revision rounds, that's another huge kind of complication that we're generating for our clients by not defining what is a, revi- a revision round, how do you provide the revision round, uh, and when, it e- when does it end? And that's what creates scope creeps by not addressing this. Um, allowing all means of communication. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with the uh, message on WhatsApp, then the Facebook uh, uh, Messenger also beeps. And uh, just to let you know that an email was sent uh, through your website, but also to your personal inbox, uh, just in case. And uh, yeah, that's crazy. You know, that's crazy. And my my the, the one I hate the most is the voice messages on WhatsApp that I can stand these ones. Uh, so allowing all means of communication, that's another complication. So what does work? What can we do to make sure that this thing actually, uh, uh, all of these problems are actually solved for us? So the right thing to do is just choose one system and stick to it. Now, I'm going to show you our system, but it doesn't have to be just our system. As long as you have one system that serves your pro- your project from the beginning to the end, and you just stick to that, and you're not allowing any other means of communication, uh, you, you literally close all of other channels uh, when it comes to managing the project. Fine, for marketing, you got to be more open and, uh, and accept communications, uh, you know, uh, incoming communications wherever they come. But when the project is running, it's your house, you know, you control that house. Um, right, so what we found before we built this tool is what was kind of interesting is, uh, uh, is inviting the client to the office. Now, obviously, that's not really a, 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 a feasible anymore. So the next best thing is sharing screens via video call or having them basically just having them point at the screen and telling you what's up. That's the best way of uh, of doing it, getting to this experience of them literally clicking on something or pointing at something and doing that. Uh, but when it comes to video calls with the designers, usually that was our experience. And it quickly turns to this. I love this GIF. I'm gonna st- let's let's give it a few seconds to really experience it, you know, because I'm sure that you guys know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> And um, yeah, so again, it's a huge waste of time. Someone is sitting on your shoulder, just navigating you through what you need to do. This is your job. You don't want anyone holding your, uh, you don't want to be become a mouse for hire. 
Uh, so we took the best from all worlds to create one tool that will help fix all of these problems once and for all. And this is WP Feedback Pro. It's a communication tool for WordPress professionals. Um, basically, it's allowing your clients to simply click any element on the actual website, front and back, and make a request right then and there. It will collect all of the information for you, and I'm going to show you exactly how it works um, right now. So, uh, JP, should I move on and do a bit of a demo and show people how they can uh, use this tool? Will it work for you? I was wondering if we should try and play the video as a screen share, if the audio will go through, but it's up to you. Which one do you prefer to do? Um, I can do a walkthrough and then, then, we, and then maybe uh, JP, you can uh, just shout out questions from the chat as they come. I'll do that, but I think everyone is very engaged to see how this works. The questions will definitely come at the end. So, sure. so give us a live walkthrough. Uh, the quality on my side is okay. I'm seeing you in good resolution. So awesome. it seems to me that the internet gods are with us tonight right. and today. Uh, mercy on that. So <laughs> I, let, let's do, I think for me, you know, if I could do everything live from where I'm sitting, it would be much better because it's so much more interactive and, and one can actually see how it's done. One of the things that I think annoy me most is when I watch an online tutorial and I see how they skip a certain area because they know there's a, a, a little bug in that area and then they cut it out. And that's right. why I like live tutorials because, I mean, you are very proud of your product. Uh, we've talked about this and, and you guys want to make sure that it works because if it doesn't work, you lose clients. This is an absolute client-based yes. tool, right? So it's got to work well and it's got to work perfectly. So... Um, Definitely. Let's have a look. Okay, awesome. So I already have uh, my little kind of uh, walkthrough here. Uh, let me just make sure so that we have our pages in place. Yes, we got the video. Right, so before video starts, guys, just what's very important here is that this is a WordPress tool, so not working for Brizzy Cloud. And what is also important is that it works with Brizzy WordPress and WordPress. So that's the whole point here is that Vito is going to work on a site that includes Brizzy WordPress plugin to show you that it runs smoothly. Exactly. So we installed, uh, I loaded up Brizzy and I loaded up one of the template pages, beautiful template uh, uh, that I found there, um, excluding the images that are, uh, you know, uh, uh, that can be custom made, but that's actually gave me a good use case to talk about how to get those images from your clients. Um, all right, so let's get started. So now we're on the website. So I would like you guys to imagine like this is your client's project and you're now building the website and uh, this can be at a stage. So if we're talking about the flow that we were talking about, we were, uh, that I showed you guys on the presentation, um, this can start from the uh, layout. So right now, let's say we don't really have a proper design in place. Uh, we have some colors, but basically we have a layout. You know, we have a, an image on the left, uh, some text on the right and a button at the bottom, right? But we don't have the proper content for this page. We only have a template, right? So Peter, before you continue, just a question. Uh, I see you have already installed here WP Feedback, right? Uh, Correct. Are you, uh, can you just show us that or are you going to get to that so that we just have an idea of how do we get to this point where it is installed? Right. So uh, to do that, there is actually a walkthrough, uh, uh, like a wizard that takes you through the entire process. I will go through some of the settings screen, but right. in order for me to get to that stage, I would need to uh, delete the plugin, clean up some stuff. On the yeah, no problem. System. Right. And but so the plugin is deleted uh, directly from your site, right? Exactly. You 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 get the you get the plugin. You drop it on your own website, uh, on your client's website, and then from there it will just walk you through each step, uh, hand in hand. You know, like communication is our game, so the wizard is super friendly and just walks you through everything. Um, right. So let's say we got that, and now the plugin is installed. Let's see how we can create a task. So, for example, I need to get this content from my client. What is your main USP, unique selling proposition? Right. I'm just gonna click this plus icon. And click this guy and say, um, what is the main uh, selling proposition for your biz? Right? I'm just going to choose the client. That's it. Now, not only that he got that message, when he clicks on it, it's going to show him a screenshot of exactly what I've seen here. So you can see exactly what, and the area is marked so that we can communicate visually about exactly what's going on what's going on. And um, also, I I can see the, the screen size, I can see the browser version. Uh, so when the client comes in here and says, uh, 
for example, there's a, uh, we need to change this to, right? That's the extent of the communication and see how awesome it is because you're getting everything that you need and all they needed to do is just write that because we got them to the experience like they're sharing the screen, like we're sharing screens and we're pointing at things. We're just pointing at this button, we need to change the color, we need to change this title and so on. I need to get this part of content here from you and we can even uh, um, address the fact that we need it to be matching in length, you know, which is sometimes when you show this to a client or you don't have the visual presentation and you have a section like this with three uh, kind of small icons and, uh, and descriptions, you sometimes get like two paragraphs for this guy, three words for this guy and one and a half paragraph for this one, right? And so the whole thing looks wonky, but because there's a visual representation of the whole thing, now it makes sense. Um, make sure. Keep the length, right? Now, when it comes to images, so we need to collect some of the images here. So for example, on this one, uh, can you please upload the relevant image here? So this is what I, if, uh, you know, a task that I created uh, yesterday on my uh, recorded demo, but now I'll act as a client. Let's say I went into here and I see this little request. Can you uh, please upload the relevant image? I can just choose whatever image that I have from here uh, you know, let's get this little wapu, and there it is. And more than that, this image is now in the media library, which means that you don't need to download this. This is the experience that we're all facing right now. Save this image, go into here, go back to the back end, upload it to the media, do it in there, you know, just such a pain, you know, and all of that is just, it was just there, yeah? Um, now I want to explore a little bit what's going on here on the popover. So first thing we have the user. So every user that we have within WordPress can be shown right here. Then next up, we can choose the urgency of the task and you can choose whether to show this to the client or not. Maybe this is something for you to say if it's critical or not. But I like to use that uh, to give the client the ability to do that just so that we can understand their emotional state. So how urgent do they feel this thing is, right? Sometimes they would say that this is critical even though you know it's not, but at least you know that this is how they see the, the situation. Right, so I have a question on that for the users. I, w I wanted to ask you where, how do you bring the users in? Is this, you set up your roles at the beginning and then they will display here automatically. Uh, is, is that how it's done? Exactly, so when we're gonna go to the setting screen, you're gonna see how we can choose which roles will be listed in here. And then there's also a setting to choose the default client and the default uh, a webmaster. So you would choose your own user and you would choose the client user or the main client's user so that they get uh, different levels of uh, functionality from the tool. Um, again, we ate all the complication for you guys when it comes to uh, understanding what I need to know, what they need to know, and all of these kind of stuff. And we'll see that as we uh, progress through the points here. Uh, but I'll show that in the settings as well. Um, here, the next one is the status. So we can uh, mark this, all right, cool, I'm in, now this task is in progress, which again, sent a notification to the client, let them know that you're on it. So you don't even need to write anything here. Once it's done, your market is complete. And again, it's communicated to the client. Um, if you do wanna pull it out of the screenshot, let's say you're, you're, you're browsing, uh, this is the automated one when the task was created, which as well, you can turn on and off if you like. And, uh, but let's say I'm on a smaller screen, right? And now I'm on my phone and everything that you're seeing here can be done on any device. Let me just refresh so you can see. And it maps everything because it's the, the stickers are bound to the div. So it doesn't matter which device you're on. You see now we're in mobile layout and everything just realigned in the place that it should be. Uh, but now I want to communicate that I'm on this screen and it looks wonky, right? So I can take another screenshot and it's just going to give us a little nifty sound. And now I can see exactly what the other side was seeing, which is what I'm seeing right here, right? And uh, yeah, let's get out of this. So you mentioned that it sends a notification to the client. Is that, will that send it an email to them and tell them, hey, there's something going on or how, why do they get to inform them that there has been some changes or requests made? Right, so when the client visits the website for the first time, we ask, uh, uh, we recognize that and we ask them, which notifications would you like to get? Would you like to be notified about every task? 
every comment, every status change? Uh, would you like to get an automated report every day? Maybe an automated report once every seven days. These are all stuff that happen automatically for you. And uh, uh, But you have control as to which options to show the client. So I'll show you in the back end the general notification settings where you can choose whether the client has the option to receive a comment or not. Uh, uh, but then, the, but, uh, but then they also have that level of deciding to accept what you decided for them, or if it's too much, they can tick it off. Um, right. So this is our popovers, and this is the experience that we have in here. Also, we can see we have uh, our custom tagging feature that you can uh, tag different tasks in here, um, which will connect to our dashboard, which we will see in a second as well. Now, another interesting thing is the sidebar. So here on the side, as soon as I clicked on our little logo here, um, it popped open this little sidebar where I can navigate between the different tasks just by clicking on here and just see what it's doing. And you see this task, for example, opened in the pop-up. This is what we call a general task. A general task is gener generic to the entire page. So if, if there is something that says like, uh, I don't need this page at all, right? That would be a general task and it will be saved like that. Uh, and you can see that this is now a gen marked as a general task that needs work and it's marked as something that needs doing right now. Um, yeah, so this is our little sidebar experience. You can also navigate to different pages from in here. Uh, just by clicking on that, it's gonna take you to that page, scroll down and show it to you where that page is. Uh, so for example, if we're gonna click on this guy. Yeah, it actually took me into the graphic feedback tool, which we're gonna to cover in a minute as well. Um, right, and then we can do the same stuff in the back end, which we'll see there. Now here on the top, we have three, uh, 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 four options. Uh, the first one is filtering. So if you want to filter, just see, let's see what's just open. So I don't want to be bombarded with tasks. Let's say you have 40 tasks here. You just want to see what you need to work on right now. Or if you want to see if some of your guys, your team, team mates are already working, you can click on in progress and see what people are already working at the moment. Your client can do the same as well to see what you are doing at the moment. And um, of course, filter by priority as well. Next up, we can show and hide some stuff here. So if there's too much things on the page and you want to see what's, what's the text below this, you can just hide the tasks. And when you reopen the, the sidebar, it will re-trigger this uh, for you. And show the completed tasks. So if there's are some tasks on this page that are not showing at the moment, I can click here. The, the completed tasks are being hidden by default uh, so that uh, you only need to focus on what you need to do. Uh, but if you do want to see them, they are right there. And if I'm going to click this guy, it's going to give us a really quick snapshot of uh, the details for each task, the status, the priority, and if it's a general task and so on. Um, right. The next up, we have our report. So I talked about the automated reports, but these are a, a clickable. So if you click on it, it's just going to send the report from the last 24 hours or report from the last seven days to only the relevant users based on what they are defined in here. So if the client is not marked in here, he will not know about this task. Uh, and if he does, he will be notified here on the status and the um, and the uh, uh, urgency of this and what's going on with this particular task. Um, the last thing that is in here is our dashboard. Before we go to the dashboard, I wanna take you guys to the back end here to show you some stuff. So the same experience that we saw on the front, we can do on the back. And someone asked about the differentiator for WP Feedback compared to some of other tools like Envision App or User Back that some user, that some people have been uh, uh, using, uh, which are awesome tool for what they're trying to do. But we are the only one that is really truly focused around WordPress professionals, which gives us the ability to to go beyond. Um, for example, doing the backend comments. So for if we need to train them, we have the breezy overview and want to point out something for the client. Listen, now you can do, um, we have a, a new kind of widget uh, within, uh, now you can do global pop-ups, right? So uh, if we want to kind of point this out for them, we can do it right here on the backend. Another task that I like to create, a lot of sticker that I like to create is this one saying, don't touch this under the updates uh, tab in here. 
you know, just so the clients know. Hey, Vito, it. that will not work for me. I'm that kind of guy. If you tell me, don't press this button, I press <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> I just cannot help it. You know, uh, when I was a kid, we had an alarm system in the house, and my mom would just constantly tell me, don't press that button. And, right. and I just want to press that button. Yes. <laughs> right. So I, I would communicate that back to you as I told you not to touch this. <laughs> Because right? uh, we also have a tool that tracks what people do. It's not within our our uh, product, but they, we have a tool within the edges that tracks what people users are doing. So if someone updated the plugin, we would know and would come here and say, "I told you not to." <laughs> right. Uh, right. So that's the kind of uh, backend feature, and this can be done on every page. Uh, so, for example, if you have if, if WooCommerce just updated their, uh, yeah, we should have a slap button. I like uh, what, what James yeah. said. I'm adding this to the roadmap, Jay. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, while, so, while we're on the topic of uh, yes. customers, and uh, uh, Bryson had asked this question, you know, this um, for us working already with this environment, and you mentioned in, in prior in your presentation, uh, when we were looking at Homer Simpson, looking there at the computer screen and us right. looking at the matrix, do you guys have some kind of uh, introductory video tutorial for the, in, the the user on the other end? Because for us, it's easy to tell them, hey, do this, but how will they find out about that? That's a very good question. Uh, let's do a bit of a demo because I see that the wizard questions are coming again. So let's do demo client uh, two, right? Uh, just keep that password for me. And uh, I'm going to log in as this guy because this guy's in. Oh, I need an email. Uh, example. Would need the demo and I have the password and this guy is an editor, yeah? So this means that because this guy is an editor, oh, nice. Uh, so I need to allow editors to be able to comment as well. So I'm just gonna go to the permissions tab here and just add editors. And now this guy can also comment. I can even mark them as the client straight away, but I want you guys to see the experience. Let's say I didn't click that. So what they will see is, um, I need to log out. The login. Right. So as soon as I land on here, it asks me, who are you? So I am the client. And uh, do you want to receive the email notifications for every new task? Yes. Uh, do you want to get a weekly report? No, don't send, don't bother me with that. One last step. And then we have a bit of a video that shows them exactly how to do this on the, I'm, I'm, we're not going to the same depth as what we're going here. This is like a 20 second video sure. just to get them in the game. You know, from that point on, uh, the tool is designed to help people discover it. Uh, so, um, so that's what we're relying on at that point. But, you know, this is great. Just make this italic, you know, just change this picture, just do this, you know, that does the trick. Now, more than right. that, you know that some users want to create their own uh, experience. So wait, let me now, so now when I do let's start, it just starts, right? So now I can start commenting and I can already see everything else. It will just identify me as the uh, demo client too when I'm gonna comment. Uh, now I'm gonna log out and now I'm gonna go back to here. This is actually through our sandbox area. And now I'm logged in. Uh, so now I'm back to being the webmaster and that clarified some of the questions. Ah, but I, I went to here to, to show you that under the permissions area, uh, sorry, under the settings with the white labeling stuff where you can completely rebrand and make this feel like this is your own in the eyes of your client. You can change the color. Let's make this this color. And uh, maybe I even have a breezy kind of uh, thing here. I think I have a breezy logo. Probably not the right dimensions, but it'll do the trick for this uh, little kind of thing. Now I click save. So you see it made it tiny here, but now the whole thing is rebranded. And as you can see, we also have the tutorial video. So if you do want to make your own tutorial video with your face, uh, uh, telling them uh, how to do things and uh, assert authority, you just throw in that embed code and that will simply replace ours. Um, you can also change the link here. If you have an upsell um, uh, a link, you know, like some kind of a page that describes additional services that you offer to clients, this thing is everywhere. This logo is now going to be everywhere. I'm going to go to the front. So it's a great way of now upselling your clients from here and, uh, you know, from, uh, from that place when they're back there, 
you know, a, a bunch of places around this, even from the email notifications that they're getting. Um, right, now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna reset. Great, back to normal. And so we, we saw the back end, um, uh, we saw the back end kind of uh, commenting. Now uh, let's look at our task center. So we needed a different way of managing multiple tasks. So let's say you have a revision round with 70, 80 small tasks that each one of them take like 20 seconds, uh, which is a totally normal thing, right? Uh, but you need to manage all of that at scale. So that's where this comes into play, along with our dashboard, which I will show you. This is a, this is just for this website. You see the, the design representation, uh, the, the screenshot that was taken. You click on this, and I don't need this page at all. That's the comment. Fine. I know which page we're talking about, and I know uh, I can just click this. It will take me to that page and pop this message open. I don't need this page. No problem. I'm just going to click edit and delete this guy, right? Uh, going back. I can navigate between the different tasks as easy as that, right? And if I want to see all the details, I can just click this button as well as creating some general task filtering, a custom, all of the stuff that we could have done from the front end, we can also do from here, trigger the reports and so on. Um, yeah, now let's continue on to the graphic feedback tool. So. Um, I talked to you guys about the flow where we have um, the wireframes, right? Where there was the wireframe or the prototype of the website. Some designers decide to build inside the, uh, the browser, which I very much uh, encourage, especially with tools like Breezy. It makes it a breeze, right? To do this kind of stuff, to do a prototyping and uh, uh, write inside the browser, maybe even easier than uh, doing it in Photoshop or XD. Um, so that's how we do it, but some people still use uh, other other ways of doing it. So for example, if we have this, uh, uh, we wanna upload um, a mock-up of our design or whatever image that we want to upload. Let's do one here for the example. Um, yeah, I have this, I don't know, I can't share this, uh, this one with you guys, but let's see if I have some kind of a screenshot here. I think I did. Yeah, let's look at this one. I'm not sure what's good that's gonna be. So, ah, <laughs> um, oh, you know what? Let's show this one. So this is actually we're running a summit uh, at the end of this month. And um, so this is our sponsor booth from the summit. You guys gonna get gonna get like a a really sneak preview because no one has seen this except for the sponsors. Uh, yeah, um, let me know what you think. So a process that I could do is send this link to our sponsors. It doesn't really work with this background, so let's change the color of the background here to something a little more uh, nice. Yeah, but you can choose what background every design has to make sure that it pops. But this is how the sponsors area is gonna look like. And now uh, let's say I wanna ask them about what video do you want in here? No problem, I'm just gonna click on that. That's an image, right? And uh, please uh, let, uh, please drop all of the uh, links to your videos. So then each sponsor can come into here based on their users and just drop a link to their YouTube and I have everything in one place for together this. This is actually a good idea. I might just do that. <laughs> I just came up with this concept. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's our graphic feedback tool. Now let's say the design changed. Then I can upload a, design, a, new, a new version of this design. Let's see if I have something here. For, for how this design evolved, I must have something here from before. I do. I think so. No, it's the same one. Let me do another one. And we'll try. I'm not sure. Uh, um, one more second, uh, just for the example, but it's not really important. So I might just give up on this completely, uh, which I will do right now. So let's say we started with the background. I'll just take the background in. Yeah, so we have the background, what is happening behind the booth, uh, but it's in like, a, you know, in this kind of shade, um, which we didn't really like, and we changed it to like a normal color background and then added everything on top of it. So you can jump between the designs and see how the design evolved over time. Um, and also it's a great way to communicate to the client. Listen, man, we're already at like the seventh revision. Come on, we got to finish this thing. Um, right, so that's how we kind of like uh, run this uh, from this one. Again, the same stuff as you know from the other parts. You click on it and it pops it open for you. 
That's our a graphic feedback tool. Again, the logo can be changed when you change your, to your own brand, so you have your own environment. On the feedback tool, I just want to jump in here quickly with one of Jay's questions as to if you send this kind of, or a client, you send something to the client, can they send feedback without logging into WordPress via email to you, or does that happen only through the dashboard? So yes, they can through guest mode, which we will talk about uh, on the settings there in a minute. But an, um, a, a more solid experience actually with this is just to add like uh, this little snippet here, which we're kind of teaching our users before we are going to release this. Is this all this function already exists? Login equals one. WPF login equals one. And if I'm going to go to incognito and drop this in, it's going to give me this experience. Ask you to log in straight away with my user. I already have the user. Let's, that's the demo user that we created for the client just a second ago together. So I can click and boom, I'm in and I'm working. Yeah. Um, so no back and forth. No, they don't need to look, they don't need to know about the WP admin screen because it takes them to the wrong place. They don't need to go to the dashboard. They need to start working. They need to start with the flow. This, the uh, sending people to WP admin, then they go to the dashboard, then they go to the homepage. Uh, that is what we call developed traffic, right? Because you created an elaborate process from something that was meant to be simple like this experience. Um, yeah, this, uh, I hope that answers the question. And I'll just continue on here with some of the other stuff. So let's explore some of the settings. So you, you had some questions around this. Um, we saw this area about white labeling. You can do the whole thing. Uh, you can send notifications. You can choose the from notification or the uh, and the additional emails that you want to receive all notifications just in case. This is a great place to put your support desk email, for example, if you have one. Uh, permissions. So this is an awesome screen uh, to allow you to. Uh, so here we can allow guests. Guests. So in this case, what we would do if we have one client, we can choose demo client here, demo client two. And let me go back to that. Uh, did I did I open it? Did I close it? I closed it. Great. I'm not logged in. Let me remove that login. So now I'm not logged in, but it will recognize that I am the client. I don't know if I clicked save in there. No, it didn't. I need to click save. And then it will show that. Oh, maybe caching or something. But basically now it identifies me as the default uh, client visiting and commenting without being logged in. That's what we call our guest mode uh, based on here. Uh, you can also see that you have full flexibility. We have our default settings, uh, but uh, we encourage you guys to experiment and uh, tweak this thing to check what works for you specifically uh, when it comes to showing the different widgets on the popovers, if we to trigger the auto screenshot, if to allow the, the uh, different uh, users to uh, delete uh, uh, tasks, and uh, maybe you have a client that is kind of annoying, so you don't want them to delete anything, uh, so you can just take this off of him and so on. Um, also, everything is into you can integrate the whole thing through Zapier uh, to more than uh, 1500 tasks, uh, uh, apps on there. Now, I want to take you guys to our dashboard before we wrap up this, this uh, demo. Um, let's go to the dashboard. Before going to dashboard, let me just drop in a few questions that's yes, still please. related to where you were. Okay, so Ross had asked that the the images you had looked there in the image feedback, is that just your normal JPEGs and PNGs or does it also include wireframes, sketch files? What, what can you do in that area? I understand. Everything has to be an image, uh, though we do have a plan to allow PDFs as well. Uh, and uh, 2021 is going to be the year of integrations, in, in which case we're going to explore uh, how we can uh, import this for, directly from Sketch, directly from XD. But for now, you can upload any type of image and it will work there. Okay, great. I think, yeah, there's uh, a few more. Philip wants to have a lifetime license for the Brazil right. community. <laughs> so, right. to, to be honest, when we first launched, we ran a bit of a lifetime uh, deal, but that has, hasn't been the case for a long time. But stick around till the end with the offer that uh, JP and I are going to tell you guys. And uh, uh, it, it really is almost free. Yeah. 
just I see that Chetan has mentioned that he's got some uh, in network issues, guys. Yeah, I, I also have it here again. I, I never have high expectations for where I sit for the I, internet. So it's based on the region. Um, I just see how quickly Vito is jumping from one tap to the next tap, and I'm green with envy that your your <laughs> internet is that quick. You know, I still feel I'm sitting here in the modem era. Right. So let's go to your 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 dashboard. Right. So what happened? Let's let's uh, kind of take a step back and see what happened. So. This one is one website, right? But all of us have multiple websites. An average, uh, uh, an average agency in the space have about 18 websites. Um, so to do that and to manage all of these websites from one place, we created our dashboard, which is, you can have access to this by literally clicking on this little uh, icon here on each one of your websites. It will take you to this login. I'm just gonna log in. And now I have all of my websites in one place. You can even see that exact website that we were talking about right now. Uh, so I'm going to click through to this guy. And we can see all the tasks that were created on this one. Please drop all the links to, the, to your videos. You remember, we just created this guy together. Uh, I don't need this page at all with that visual presentation. So this is an amazing platform to start your morning at. So you come to here in the morning, you click on all sites, and you just make everything green. That's your goal. Just get everything to green. Uh, just run through the tasks. You're going to go through this guy and see what's going on. Now, uh, uh, from here, um, you have you have the same experience. You can, you can jump between the different websites here, but you can click on this to have all the websites, and you can jump between the tasks on here. Uh, and you can see it's super, super fast because every minute uh, matters. Um, here you can change the status. It's fully syncing with that, webs with the, that uh, WordPress installation. If you have any sync problems with it, which could happen with APIs and some different uh, uh, server stacks, uh, you know, in the ecosystem, you have a little button here to click on, and it will sync that website. Where is the current website we we're talking about? This guy, click on it, and it's going to ask me, "Do you want to resync?" Uh, yes, I'm not going to do it now uh, to not waste, uh, a, a, you know, resources in vain. Uh, but uh, because everything is already up to date, so it worked awesome. Um, now, here on the top right, we have this button, Open Tasks page. And you know, I talked to you about that process of going to the WP admin screen, putting in your password, going to the, getting to the dashboard, then going back to the front and starting to work from there. Again, huge developed traffic. So from the dashboard, we created this button that not only takes you directly to this, to this particular task, scrolls down to where the task is and pops it open, but also logs you in automatically uh, throughout the process. So for example, let's go, I'm already logged into this website, but let's go to our little demo site here. And uh, let's find uh, one of the pages here. We have demos for a bunch of stuff. Let's say, uh, yeah, we have a breezy uh, page here as well on our main demo. So let's open this up and let's see if it's gonna log me in. Hopefully you know how this thing is. Yeah, I'm logged in, perfect. And I wasn't logged in. I'm gonna, if you want, I can gonna log out just to show what I mean. There it is, I'm logged in in a second uh, without going to the WP admin, without doing that. And also another interesting thing that you can see is check out how many tasks are on this page. There's loads and loads of tasks on this page and you already saw the speed, the load speed for all of this. So some people are kind of concerned about will this slow down my website a little bit or uh, uh, is this too much to load up on the uh, on this thing? Uh, but no, it's not. It's um, it, it, we're actually managing the data in a way that is very, very efficient. And uh, from there, we're going to continue to optimize it even further. Um, right. So we saw this guy. Let me take you to one more screen in here, which is our Kanban view. So sometimes you want to get a bit of a, a snapshot of your business to see what's going on. How many stuff do we need to do on this project to complete it? So again, the game is just get everything to complete and you can just drag tasks, drag, drag them to where they need to be to make sure that they're done as you're working on them. Now, if you need the details, you just click through, obviously gives you the same experience as you've seen over there, just like on a Trello type of uh, uh, flow here. You click on here, you view the comment and you can just write your comment right here. It will post it directly on the website. Clicking this button will give you the same experience of pushing it over there. Um, a nice feature here uh, that we that is just in its infancy is our time tracking tool. So here you can track the time per task per team member. So you can 
invite all of your team members to the platform and communicate among yourselves through the notes with stuff that clients can't see. This is a note that will never be posted on the website. Yeah, so this is like internal communication for you guys. Uh, and you can see my, my team here and I can notify someone else and so on. Um, right. Uh, so this tracks, uh, we're talking about it through the time. This, this tracks your time and you can edit this if you need. Uh, just click play and it's going to track this. Even if two people are working on the task, uh, uh, when both of you stop, it's just going to add up so you know exactly how long this task took to complete. Uh, but an interesting point for all of us is to use the estimation. We really encourage our users to do that because most times we think that something is going to take seven minutes and it takes up 40 minutes or longer. Uh, so this just gets you more realistic when it comes to your to your time estimations. You can see what you thought it would take. Change the color for this guy. Oh, yeah, sure. This is just like a five-minute task, right? But then you can actually start seeing if it really is a five-minute task or not. Um, which yeah. I, which I think is a great feature. You know, when I've worked with clients before, I've worked once with a client all over in, the, in Laos, Right. And they think you spent no time. They think you yeah. are changing an image and that it's something that you just did quickly. And it's very frustrating when that payday comes and you kind of get the feeling that they think your value isn't worth the money that they are paying you. you know? So I think if you are working, especially if you're working with big corporate companies who work with this all the time, they understand the lay of the land. But smaller concerns often think, you know, I, I heard you can do this for free. So why on earth am I paying you for all of this? Right. Very great true. Picture. Very, very true. People, people uh, uh, just have no perception of uh, of the time that it takes to do this. Like, I don't know how long it takes a car mechanic to fix my carburetor. You know, I have no idea how long it takes. Um, I just know what will be the bottom line in in monetary wise, right? Uh, so this gives another level of that relationship to or transparency. Um, but to be honest, uh, JP, uh, as a, th this feature is it is just a uh, uh, just being rolled out so right now it just uh, allows us to track it internally but it's definitely on the roadmap to give you guys an option to share this information with the client so that they know how long uh, uh, it's, it's actually taking um right i think that's pretty much uh, uh, it here um i just want to show you the global settings because we understand that you guys have a bunch of websites so if you want to set up uh, your logo and your colors and your tutorial video just from one place and sprinkle it, your branding to your entire network. Or if you change the logo, you can just change it from here. It will change it on all of the platforms, uh, all of the websites uh, from one go. Um, yeah, these are the global settings screen. And uh, that's, uh, oh, and finally, we have our users where you can invite new users very simply from here. Let's skip this guy. And you can see, and it, this is one of our one of those use, uh, features that we're building on top of as well. Uh, we're very much working like you guys at Breezy. You know, we release something into the wild, we see if people care, and then we build on top of that. You know, um, so uh, so here we have our activity feed. Where at this point, we're just letting you know that we're tracking every single action that the we're collecting these data points of every single action that each one of the users are doing on this uh, on uh, the different websites uh, but this will be later used for reports and uh, uh, f and filtering so that the managers of agencies have a much more control over uh, what their teams are doing uh, and who made what mistake right right um, yeah that's uh, that's our dashboard guys. Right. I think we've actually covered all the questions that came in there, but we can go into a Q&A. So any questions that you guys still have, drop it there. I have a question which is totally not related to the product. I love your mascot logo. So uh, what is that? Is it a bear? Is it a little cat? Right. So that's actually, Wapu is actually the um, uh, the WordPress uh, uh, mascot. Uh, all right. It's been, uh, it's, it's, it's something... Uh, like I don't know, like a Japanese kind of a thing, but uh, it's pretty cool, and and it created a bit of a movement that a lot of uh, product makers in the space are creating their own kind of variation of it, you know. So uh, I would love to see a breezy one as well, kind of going out. Okay, right, because I, I I love that. Uh, I don't want to use the word cute because I'm too old for the word cute, yeah. but it it does draw my graphic design. Awesome. Uh, 
one thing, Vito, that I've actually seen when I was looking a little bit at your website and feedback from your customers, and, and I think uh, you shouldn't undersell yourself when it comes to customer support because the, the comments that I've seen is that people are very happy with the customer support. And actually, for me, you know, I, I have this test that I actually do before I buy any product. I contact them blindly and see how they respond. And if they don't respond or they, they take too long to respond, I just don't buy that product. Doesn't matter how many good reviews I've heard of that. So tell us a little bit about your customer support. Uh, so um, w this is an interesting point because we are like the guys of, we're, we're about communication. The entire uh, uh, business is designed around fixing communications, right? So the level of support that we wanted to create is on a different level than uh, what we sometimes experience from some other products in the space, you know, working, uh, building WordPress sites for more than a decade. Um, so I try to take, or we're, we're actively always trying to take the level of, um, of closeness that we, that we had at the agency and try to translate this to the product space that is obviously, you know, in a completely different scale. Um, that's a challenge. I, I wouldn't, uh, I, I, to keep it at that level, but yeah, like all of our reviews are lit, are, talking about the support, literally describing the support as uh, awesome. Uh, we make sure that it stays below the 10 hours uh, response time, even though we are a small company still. Uh, we Oh, by the way, guys, everything that you've seen until now, this is all built in the last eight months. We launched eight months ago only. Wow. So uh, there's still wow. a lot more coming and... Uh, uh, is it, which we're moving really fast uh, around all of uh, this, uh, this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and we're just about to hit the 10,000 installs as well, uh, probably in the next uh, uh, week or so even. Absolutely. Congratulations on that. I, I think that's great knowing that you are so young in the field. Congratulations. And, and I see this question and I'm going to throw it out there because uh, if you are going to visit the, the Brizzy family, you're going to hear this question that Pele has been asking. You mentioned earlier, you are fully focused on WordPress, but as you know, we do have another content management system here. So are you guys looking at maybe something like that for the future, extending it to other platforms or will this remain a 100% WordPress plugin? Right. So yeah, the answer is yes and no because uh, yes, because we're gonna uh, <laughs> uh, we are gonna open the the option for people to install this on every website. That's definitely already on the roadmap and gonna happen um, with Corona maybe longer, but about four months until we get to that point. Uh, but um, uh, but the no part of it is that we will never deep dive as deep as we do with WordPress. So WordPress True. has a focus and the other platforms and which will basically means that you have a script that you can throw in to uh, whatever website and uh, it acts like Hotjar or Intercom or uh, all of these chatbots or something like that, you know, which throw it in and it works uh, as a layer on top of the website. Uh, right. But with WordPress, we are deeply integrated, you know, so that, we, and we're doing this on purpose so that we can create all of these uh, uh, awesome uh, uh, time-saving kind of small bits and pieces. Right. But I, I understand what you are talking about is similar, you know, to the, the social proofs and the chats that you're currently getting on many sites. You can you can embed that into any of the platforms exactly. out there. So, exactly. th so that is something, Pele. I think you'll be happy with that because Pele seems to be a big Brizzy cloud man at this moment. <laughs> that is the future. But I absolutely love the integration. Your product is huge. Um, I, I, I saw the Kanban few features there. It's it. it does embrace project management. So absolutely awesome. bang on job. I'm really, really yeah. impressed with it. I'll, I'll have to go play around with it because I think there's so many features in it and to see exactly how it works, but absolutely great. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and, and well, showcasing your product. Definitely my pleasure. Thanks for having me, JP. And right. yeah. So, uh, guys, let's see what we've got here. We've gone through the Q&A. And let me see before we go. So let's talk about the surprises or what you get. Vito. Yes. Oh, uh, so uh, first of all, <laughs> uh, first of all, I want to share with you guys this, um, this uh, uh, um, uh, WordPress business uh, benchmark survey that we did. How about I just share a link here in the message so everyone can just click through and get there? That'd be great. Uh, benchmark. The survey. 
God. Yeah, and, and Bryson mentioned earlier, you could see my video, and I realized I keep touching my face. I didn't know how yeah. often I touch my face since the last few weeks that I've been in online meetings, and I and I keep seeing everybody sitting and touching their face the whole time. I yeah. don't know how we as a society is going to change that. It is fascinating. We are just so physical people and I've, I've we've started a pool in one of the team management uh, sessions we have about six people and we count who can touch their face the fewest times right. during <laughs> during the call yeah that's uh, well you know you used to have a beard so you know this this uh, movement you know that you do this true true yeah. and you play with your mustache yeah it's yeah, so yeah. annoying to people who don't have a beard can you please leave your beard alone <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I gotta keep keep my hands. You're right, Jay. <laughs> um, all right, so that was one thing that I wanted to share. But another awesome thing that we're doing right now is that um, uh, you know, obviously, the world kind of changed a couple of weeks ago. So we had to change, and we understand that uh, a lot of our users are uh, in a place right now where they don't invest into tools they're actually going into what i like to call survival mode and that's the right thing to do that's what we that's what everyone uh, should be doing uh so to help through this uh this uh, uh times what we did is we reduced our uh, monthly plans by 90 percent for the next two months uh basically from 47 dollars to five bucks a month for the next two months maybe longer uh, as i wrote maybe longer let's see you know let's see what's going on uh, how the world kind of shapes up, but uh, we did it for all of our existing users. And uh, we, we said, all right, why not open our doors to just 200 more users that want to take off up on, uh, uh, want to take us up on this offer and want to join us at this point. The reason why we're keeping it at 200 limit is because uh, we stopped hiring, you know, because we're also in survival mode. So we're, we want to make sure that, uh, like uh, JP, JP is saying, uh, support stays at optimal state. So that's what we can have. And we're not going to have more than that. Uh, so uh, come on in. There's already less than 100 left on this uh, 200 uh, allocation here. And uh, yeah, five bucks a month. It's uh, it's crazy. Absolutely good deal. So thank you very much. And guys, we will send you some news on that in the email. And then also thank you if you're still wondering whether you want to go for any Brizzy Pro plan. That includes the WordPress plugin as well as for the Brizzy Cloud. You can get a 15% discount on that. Follow the link in the moral T's and C's apply. Okay. <laughs> Peter, thank you very much. I'm going to say cheers to you now, but we can greet at the end again. Let me just quickly run through a few more slides here to remind you guys of the Pro Lifetime deal. 664 licenses left, maybe two less since this webinar started. And then a sneak peek into next week. It's only more. And I will be looking at the Brizzy Cloud Free next week and the new features. Not new features, the features from Pro that has rolled over. How you are going to create multi-pages, how you're going to set up a menu. Because in Brizzy Cloud Free, we don't have header builders, uh, the header blocks or the footer blocks. So you will have to build those out by yourself. So if you are a noob, if you want to know a little bit about Brizzy Cloud Free and how these new multi-pages work within Brizzy Cloud Free, next week, same time, we'll send out the invite later. So from me and Vito, everybody, have a good night. Stay safe. See Thanks you again. Thanks for coming on board, guys. Thanks for everyone. Right. Cheers, everyone.